I suspected that the reason for the, this rough periodicity was something to do with the sky. But uh, I was searching for it and couldn't find anything. So, essentially, I gave up. I didn't have an explanation. Jan Weiser, he reconstructed the temperature uh, using a geochemical uh, record. And the difference between that uh, reconstruction and what I was using is that Jan Weiser actually reconstructed the actual temperature. So he knew exactly how warm it was and how cold it was. So uh, I emailed uh, him. But one evening, I was sitting in my office working. Suddenly, an email popped up, and this was near Shariv. And uh, he says, well, I may have an explanation for you. He was telling me that he was working on uh, cosmic rays variability over the more or less the same time intervals, and that the variability in the amount of cosmic rays hitting the Earth over this time interval was more or less similar to uh, the variation on, in uh, the, those oxygen atoms or in the climate which we observed. After I teamed up with uh, Jan Weiser, we had an actual temperature reconstruction. And what we could learn was that it was colder here on Earth by something like 5 to 10 degrees when we were inside spiral arms of the galaxy. Nobody found anything uh, like that before and we were simply amazed from it. Uh, but more interestingly, what it means is that cosmic rays are the main climate driver on Earth, at least on geological timescales. And the only explanation uh, you have for it is uh, Svensmark's theory about the uh, cloud cover. When you compare the geological record to the astronomical record, that's what you get. You see that the two barcodes give you the same product. The black line is the geological reconstruction of the temperature on Earth using the geochemical uh, records that, uh, of uh, Jan Weiser. And what you see in the red is the uh, cosmic wave flux variations. When both things are added together, they correlate very well. Statistically, it's very significant, uh, but you don't have to believe the statistics. You can just look at it and realize that uh, it's, it's very meaningful. It's been said so many times that the sun has not been responsible for the heating we have seen uh, the last maybe 20, 40 years. However, if you look at the data, for instance, the ocean data, you will actually see that there's a very good agreement between temperatures and solar activity. And what you see is the temperature of the ocean down to about 50 meters. But if you compare the overall agreement with how the red curve is varying, it's very good. And the red curve, that is the cosmic rays. That is how the cosmic rays have been varying over this period. So we actually see, even today, that the sun is dominating the temperatures or how temperatures uh, evolve. It has done so in the past, it's doing this now, and will also do it in the future. An experiment like the one taking place here in uh, Copenhagen is crucial because it, if successful, it will shed a lot of light on the physical origin of the link between cosmic rays and climate. And this will be the last piece in the puzzle which would, would make the picture complete. So the effect, effective aerosol background corresponds more or less precisely to what you have over the ocean. The uh, experiment is not just something that you turn on and then you get the result. You get many, many results and you do a lot of experiments and you try to see if everything is consistent with that interpretation that you are giving. The results of this experiment, hopefully we will know exactly how the sun affects climate, how it modulates the cosmic rays reaching the Earth, how cosmic rays control the amount of uh, ionization, and how ionization controls climate, uh, and through uh, most probably a formation of cloud cover. It's very interesting after nearly eight years of work 
that we finally got to this phase of trying to understand the, uh, the, these uh, experiments. All the bits and pieces was done over nearly a year. So it's not like from one day to another, you sort of a sudden jumps up and says, fantastic, we got the result. It's not like that. It's actually a hard work. Do you think? I mean, there's always a degree of uncertainty when you do experiments because you are constantly questioning everything you're doing, whether it's uh, uh, right and wrong. But we have done, we have been very, very careful and we have done many, many tests on, on these ideas. So I think, uh, I mean, I, I truly think that uh, we have found a very, very important mechanism. And the mechanism was a big surprise how it actually worked. It's far, far, I mean, this is 0.34 PBB. Wow. So it's very, very low. What we find when we mimic a higher flux of cosmic rays is that we actually produce more aerosols in the chamber. This actually means that cosmic rays are producing aerosols, and these are the aerosols which are responsible for forming clouds in the real atmosphere. Through our experiments, we have found a new form for atmospheric chemistry, which we think is responsible for the formation of new aerosols and therefore also for clouds in the Earth's atmosphere. And it shows that events in the universe are driving climate here on Earth to an extent that has never been understood before. Large part of the clouds that we see in the, in the sky is really a result of this process that uh, we have investigated experimentally. But of course, uh, I mean now we have to see how other colleagues react uh, to our findings, and that will be very interesting to see how this work will be received. But I think we have done a very uh, good work, and uh, I'm very pleased that it, uh, I mean how. Everybody has been working on, on this, this project. So this is a, this is a culmination of uh, many years of work. This is really nice. We thought we had a really scientific breakthrough in the understanding of how cosmic rays affect uh, the Earth's cloud cover and therefore also the Earth's climate. But for very strange reasons, we could not get the paper published. I think we submitted it four times to different journals and we still could not get these results published. Henrik Svensmark and his group had very nice results and I would have expected them to be published uh, immediately, a few months after they found it. Instead, it took them 16 months to publish it. And uh, the reason, I think, is because of reluctance of the uh, climate community as a whole, in particular those uh, who are supporting the anthropogenic greenhouse gas theory, to accept the idea that this new theory uh, which is already shown to be supported by a lot of empirical evidence, is also supported by experimental evidence. The most frustrating part about the rejections was that there was no real critique that we had done anything wrong. It was things like, it's not interesting, it's too long. There was no real critique of the ideas, so therefore this type of rejection was even more frustrating.